All right, let's try this again. Let's see if I can record this without it just stopping on its own. All right, so I'm working on some paintings. I just finished a bunch of paintings. Um, I'm really, you know, been working a lot um, since, I don't even know, 2020, 2021. Really 21 and 22, I've really been really, when I've been finishing paintings that are uh, recent, you know, the ones I got on my Instagram, at Robert Sin underscore Claire. Um, those are the new ones that I like, I'm proud of, you know, maybe the last dozen paintings or so. I mean, probably got more like 14, and I probably have like 30 or 40 that, that you know, are either not new or not as good as my most recent, but you know, let's just, you know, I finished about a dozen or 14 paintings and I'm happy with them, that feels good. Um, and now I'm on to, gosh, so many more need to be finished. Like this one here is, uh, I call this one energy, okay? So it's like this kind of masonite or some kind of panel. Um, I got it for free, whatever, from a nice source. Um, and uh, I started working on this vertically with these, the orange and blue drawings. I believe it was, the left side was up, yes. And uh, basically it's like two separate geometric uh, you know, not, there are some angled lines, but they're either, you know, 90 degree angles or 45 degree angles, essentially. So that was the thing I was into for a while. And, um, and then I, you know, I wasn't so thrilled with it. And, uh, so I turned it on its side and I drew this drawing on top of it, which was, you know, more of the style that I was typically doing not, I got into that 90 degree angle thing for a while, like only really square type things. And it was very iconic, very um, totemic or very primitive kind of art. Uh, I like it, I still like it and I've used it in other paintings, but never quite by itself. I mean, I got some on my Instagram very early on from probably like 2000, 19 or 20 early 2020 that's about when it was yeah um when you know covid kicked in and and uh i got to work in the studio a lot more and that's when i started doing those and um i i kind of did those for a while but now i'm not doing them at least not on their own. Like I said, I will use them as a base, like to build off of, which I'll show you in a different painting. But this here is um, energy. I call this energy. We got the, the symmetrical drawing on top of the other ones, which were turned sideways. I've never done that before. Um, uh, then, as I developed it, I put these white, lines around those were kind of my attempt to convey energy convey like kind of an electrical vibration uh, around the drawings you know the under one and the top one uh, mostly the under one um, and you know I got white in there I got like a deep cad yellow and like a cad yellow light I did have a third kind of medium in there, but I removed it. I said, we, I want it more extreme, dark and light because there's enough colors going on in the background. I didn't need three different yellows. Like I got two, actually, you know, and there's two different blues. And I think there were three different blues at one time as well. And I just reduced it down to two, you know, meaning this one or that one. One is cobalt, one is a manganese with uh, some white in it. Now you know all my, you know, things, but anyway. Um, you know, we got a nice blend of pink 
dark pink to light. And um, we got these little shapes down here that kind of break up the flatness. They kind of give a little bit of a perspective. Of course, the layering gives a, a little perspective. Not perspective, but it, I, I, a little bit, kind of. So anyway, this guy is like, you know, sort of like an alien intelligent type thing. Energy is, uh, you know, emanating. It's it's live. It's it's vibrating. Very geometric. So the background, I like what's going on over here. Background is very much of that geometric style um, that I was talking about earlier. But in this case, I used it just... This is, this is the only painting I've really done that has this type of thing in the background like this. I told you I used those geometric 90 degree angle type drawings as art, as individual art pieces, and then later as like base layers for paintings. And um, this one, it, it, it has them as this like vibrating kind of area around the drawing. So that's a different thing. All right, so that's this one. Now um, I'm going to flip, move this thing, and um, hopefully, you know, this screen fits this painting best, but I'm going to put this one in there now. All right, so this one here is um, a little low. I'm going to raise it up. Oh, shoot. Got to be careful. Touchy, touchy. This is a wet painting. I'm going to raise it up some more. Okay, so... Right, this is a uh, butterfly, butterfly. So this one started out as uh, all over abstract painting, which I've been doing a lot lately. Loose gestural abstract painting. Just have some fun making an abstract painting. Abstract painting is so fun. It's like color, line, expressiveness, la la la, all that, you know, stuff you, you, I played around with in art school and, and took it pretty seriously. And now I'm, I'm kind of just doing it as a base layer. And I, and I love it. I love doing it. And then what I do is I start to tighten it up with clean painting lines, layers. Obviously, it's a big patience thing. And because um, you turn a gestural, real gestural brushstroke into a kind of a cleaned up gestural brushstroke. Okay. And then I like I did with the other painting, I just kind of put a one of my symmetrical drawings right on top. And this one, I integrated much more. And I've integrated other ones. The other one you just saw was not integrated. It was superimposed. It was separate from the background, except for like some black lines that connected it to the, to the, into different directions on the, into the background. But this, is like totally just being like swallowed up by the background. It's melting in to it. And and so I started out, you know, it was a white superimposed image on top. I didn't know how I was gonna integrate it. And it had these blue outline around the white. And then I said, okay, what am I gonna do? I got some, like, I, and I took parts of the abstract painting underneath and I, brought them on top of the shapes, such as this red, such as this black, this red over here, this yellow golden color, some of uh, these greens over here, um, a lot of different ones. There's some of this like color up here. And then I started to think about the white. You can't see it now because it's changed, but like, it's like, oh, I don't want it to be white. What am I gonna do with that white? So I started with these very light, colors that traveled over the drawing and into the background connecting with the background or connecting with another part of the drawing and that was cool and i liked it because they traveled inside of the drawing shape and they went outside also and then i said okay i still want to cover the rest of that white so I started choosing all these different colors, these very light pastel-y colors. They're a little darker than the light colors that I started with because I wanted them to be very close to white. That was my, like, my thought at the time. And then I said, you know what? 
I don't want him to, the whole thing to be so light. Let's take a little chance. Let's get a little bit funky with this green, this like purple here. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty um, strong. It's not so whitened down, you know? And so I went around with all the colors of the spectrum there. Um, you know, obviously no red because it's pink. Uh, went to greens, light greens, light purples, you know, on and on. So anyway, this one is looking pretty good. I'm really feeling this, but um, a lot of more work to do on this. You know, it's wonderful. Very happy. All right, let's switch it up. Um, I'm going to do big paintings because um, I don't want to move this camera around, whatever, tripod. And uh, this is pretty random, this one. Not random, but this one is an odd painting. Um, so I will move up a little bit so you can get a better look. Um, this one, I think I, I just call it vision, a vision. It's called vision because I basically based it on this vision that I had when I was driving down the road, driving down 264 on my way to Greenville. And I, I just imagined, you know, you see that this is like the road I'm on and it's very, you know, it's a farmland, everything's flat and there's trees on the horizon and whatnot. I just, just kind of pictured this, one of my drawings, you know, one of my drawings coming out of the, just being like a gigantic thing in the sky, coming from behind the, the uh, horizon there. Um, so, you know, my drawings are like visions. They, they, all the th ones that I've shown you, they're, they're visions of like, uh, you know, things I see when, you know, reaching higher levels of consciousness. And those higher levels of consciousness can be found in meditation. They can be found when I'm driving down the road, you know, like I did at this time, because I'm, I'm constantly like somewhere else. Like I, I don't, we all live in 3D reality, but it's not where I kind of creatively live. I live on another place. And this is where I see stuff like this when I'm driving down the road. And, um, I don't know. We're pretty rough on this. Like, uh, this one I've struggled with for a while. I, um, I want to make a, it look kind of like realistic down here, but not really, obviously. I don't want to, you know, be like painting a realistic landscape. Um, I don't want to paint a real road. I often, I once thought about putting like a, you know, realistic looking road with like, um, you know, like a, like a car, you know, stuff that was in the photograph that I took, because I took some photographs as references, and, you know, but this is pretty much how I saw it. You know, obviously, you have a vision, and then you go home and you draw it. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's very like what this is. All right, so this is vision. It's, it's just a vision. You're driving down the road, and you see this huge, gigantic thing in the sky in front of you. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of things that I experience. All right, so uh, let me flip this one. And uh, this one here is another, it, these are all anthropics. These are all pretty raw, like not raw, but some of them are closer to finish than others. But this one here um, is, you know, this one's a lot different. Um, for me, even. <laughs> um, and this one's got a lot of work to be done. Um, but this is like, see, I did a painting called Floater. 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 I, why is it Floater? Um, I had a reason. I can't remember what it was. Um, at first, I just did it because they look like they're floating, these images. Obviously, these are the same images. This one's smaller. This one's bigger. Um, and the other floater painting I did just looked like a floating image, and so do these. But gosh, I, I just had a new idea not a new idea, but a kind of a new realization about the whole floating concept. But anyway, I'll, I'll figure it out sooner or later. Um, this is an abs another abstract painting. There are some paintings that I've done, like California, where I made an abstract painting. And not a gestural, brushy, you know, expressive one. It's more like just abstract lines and shapes 
And this is one of those kind of, um, I don't even know what it's influenced by, maybe graffiti. And then, of course, everything I do is somewhat, somehow influenced by graffiti. But this one is just freaking bizarre. Like, it's, it's even weird for me. Like, I don't even know if I like it. I mean, I do. I love it. I didn't know if I liked it when I first started it. Now, the painting process. So, like, I don't like to talk about painting so much. Like, oh, the technique, the, the color and the dirt. Like, I guess I do, but I mean, like, I talk about what the thing is. I like what I'm doing, not how I'm doing. The what is, is these floating alien intelligence objects, not objects, entities. That's what I see. These are my visions. These are, are um, they're representatives of higher intelligence. Are they aliens? I'm not sure. They are, but these are the visual stuff of my seeking and achieving higher levels of consciousness, finding, experiencing, whatever you call it. I see this shit. That's why I fucking paint it. It's fucked up. And it's it's like, whatever. So to be like, oh, you know, you're just bugging. I'm like, yeah, I am bugging. But that's what I do. And... Now you get into like how it does physically contact the physical world and the physical art tradition of painting. And this is what happens. And this is only the beginning. This is going to be insane. That butterfly is freaking insane. And the, the, the energy is really insane too, but not quite to this level and to the level of butterfly. Um, I, you know, it sounds like I'm bragging on myself, but it's like, my goodness, I'm, you know, this is what I do. And, and painting, the physical act of painting and color use and all that crap is kind of taken for granted by me, right? Because it just comes. It's easy. I don't think about it. One move leads to the next. There is no thinking beyond like, you know, conceiving of what the painting's going to be. What's, you know... I guess I come with a thought like, okay, I got an abstract drawing underneath and then I'm going to incorporate one of my symmetrical drawings which represent aliens, higher intelligence, um, entities, you know, beyond our 3D world that are, that are, that are out there. They're out there. You're going to see them, hopefully. We're all going to see them. Maybe not looking like this. This is the way I see them. You'll see them differently, perhaps, if you're lucky enough to get there or experience the experience beyond 3D reality, which is kind of sucking these days, as you can see if you watch the news with war and, you know, Trump and, and eventual dictatorship, which is pretty much coming down the pike. So this is where I exist. This is my reality. It's not my reality. This is where I go. It is my reality. I spend more time in this room than I do in reality, practically. Anyway, this is my magic room. This is where shit goes down. This is where, where I communicate. This is where I receive. Thank you. All right. Do I have more? I'm not going to have more. This is going to be my last one. No, I got one more. Um, I do have a lot more to share, but... I'm just going to share one more. And perhaps I will come down to earth just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Come back to reality. Which I don't really care for. But anyway. Tell you what that means as far as coming back to reality. Okay, so this painting is called Tiki. And... It's upside down. Uh, it's tiki because it kind of looks like one of those Hawaiian tiki faces. Sorry to be disrespectful to Hawaiian Pacific Islander culture. Um, it's sort of a kitschy reference because it just kind of looks like something. I don't. I have not really studied that, so it's it's it could be offensive, and I'm sorry if it is. I don't mean it to be. Um, I, I probably could rename it. But anyway, um, 
uh, I like kitschiness. I'm sorry. I am still attached to the art world and growing up and going to art school in the 90s. So anyway, um, this one was part of every, every other painting in a series of five. This is the fifth one. All of them are finished. I got alien brain, alien fingers, uh, Whitney or Stanley, and floater. Those were four, and this is the fifth one, called Tiki. So it's it was just a, a, a group of five drawings that I did. I don't know if it was 2020 or 21. It's probably maybe early 21 I started these. I mean, just, just you know, I draw all the time. And I just, you know, one day you, you knock off some drawings. And you're like, wow, those ones were really good. I'm going to make paintings out of those. And this is the last of them. Of, this, this is the closest one of the ones that I showed you in this video. They are, this is the closest to being finished. So, um, the drawing is there, obviously. Inside painting is pretty much different than anything that I've, you know, shown you so far. Very graphic, linear, symmetrical, you know. Graphic meaning like colors are separated, shapes and lines are defined. Um, I need to, very close to being finished. Um, the background or the, the green on the outside, it um, has that kind of abstract, kinetic kind of feel to it. But I didn't start with that. I added that. It started out with more of a solid color and I, I added it because I felt it needed it. And it was also a thing that I was doing. You saw it in the, um, in energy, the background of blue and orange had all the funky brush strokey stuff going on inside of it. And I got it going on in green and I got it going on in purple here. The purple is sort of like these extensions coming from out the blue blends inside. Anyway, so another vision from higher intelligences, higher, I don't even want to say intelligences, just like these are, are what are floating around. These are my, these are my powers, man. Not my powers, the powers that I see, the powers that are, are running the game, uh, running the universe, you know, and and this, the game, is, I say running the game, and you think of like Trump and, and Russia and China and all that shit. They're running the game. They're running the 3D game. But that shit is going to fade away and, and burn away, melt away. However the hell it ends with us in, in fucking underwater, you know, with the fucking global warming shit and like all the fucking trash that human beings have fucking done to this fucking planet and to each other and to the fucking universe which is not really thrilled about it and uh but they don't care because they go on regardless of what the fuck we do they don't fucking care they're out there they are way more powerful like you know you think of the insignificance of the earth and 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 everything and this is where i'm at this is this those are the kind of entities powers energies you know it's like it's like you know religions you can call them gods you can call them you know whatever you want they're just they're just out there they are powerful that's what i'm capturing those those are what i'm painting that's what i'm painting and i have a lot more to come uh i got like 14 paintings on tap like i said i got like 14 finished i got about 14 on tap and then i got about uh you know another dozen more that i have you know, ready to go. You get those canvases and get them stretched and primed and, and I'm gonna bang them out and they're gonna be so dope. And they are gonna be even more and more clear expressions. Not expressions, what am I looking for? Like, you know, the concepts are gonna be clearer in terms of this higher intelligence, religious kind of level of stuff. So anyway, keep tuned for that. It's Mad Squib. 
Robert Sinclair, the artist guy. Yeah. All right. Word is bond. Peace. Thanks for watching.